Kia ora and welcome. What you're about to see is real. Haunted New Zealand are a team of respected career professionals for whom honesty and integrity come first. In addition to normal video cameras, the team uses thermal imaging, which you will see as colourful stills or video, and night shot video cameras to allow low light filming. Nothing you will see or hear is trickery or fakery, and all of the evidence you will witness is genuine. In the historic city of Napier, on the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand, lies the country's oldest, and it is claimed most haunted, prison. Almost completely destroyed by a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake in 1931, Napier was extensively rebuilt, and is now a popular tourist attraction for people wanting to enjoy its beautiful Art Deco architecture. Napier Prison was built in 1862 on top of Napier's Bluff Hill and was originally constructed to hold just 30 prisoners. The facility was used until the early 1990s and was officially decommissioned in 1993. In addition to being a prison, the location was also used as an orphanage and a psychiatric unit. During the 19th century, four hangings were conducted at the prison. Napier Prison's most infamous death row inmate is that of mass murderer Roland Herbert Edwards, who was hanged on the 15th of July, 1884. Roland was sentenced to death after slitting the throats of his wife and children after having a premonition of his family perishing in a house fire. Roland is said to be buried upright in the prison graveyard in a state of eternal unrest. There have been claims that Roland's spirit is often seen wandering around the prison graveyard, being especially active on July the 15th, the anniversary of his death. Ian, Lisa and Kim from the Haunted New Zealand team travelled to Napier and arrived at the prison at 5pm on Saturday the 10th of August 2019. The temperature was 11 degrees falling to about 7 degrees overnight. The skies had a little cloud but the weather was dry. The moon was 70% full and was in the waxing gibbous phase. At the prison, the Haunted New Zealand team were greeted by two of Napier Prison's staff, Ali and Holly. We were escorted through the main gates and towards the mess hall, where we unpacked our equipment and set up our base for the evening. As we were given a guided tour of the prison, Ali and Holly shared fascinating tales of its often macabre history. and of the inmates who stayed, and in some cases, died there. The Dome. The Haunted New Zealand team set up cameras and recording equipment in the Dome, a central crossroads or junction between the main corridors of the prison cell blocks, connecting the South Wing, East Wing, and the apartments where the escape rooms are. So the clicking that you're hearing is just the thermal camera and it makes a regular sound. The team were seated together and began a communication session. This is where attempts are made to make contact with any resident spirits by speaking to them. Oh, did you hear it? Yeah, I did. Did you hear that like a, It's like a breath. Is that what you heard? I heard, I heard what something sounded like on a jail door. Yeah, I heard something like looking. 
Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, I did. She was like, oh, it sound like a breath. It was freezing cold and the team had difficulty doing the communication session as the wind kept gusting through the dome. So it was impossible to continue as we were getting too much noise contamination. However, the team observed temperature drops in the area whilst feeling hot themselves. Whilst Karen was filming the team using the thermal imaging camera, a distinct noise was heard, which sounded like something being pushed or dragged sharply. Is there somebody here? Could you walk up and down the corridor so we can hear you? What was that? That came down from the right hand side. What was that? What was that? That came down from the right hand side. Lisa, Ian and Karen all commented on the sound at the time and everyone agreed that it seemed to have come from the corridor directly behind the camera, in the direction of room 26. The sound couldn't be clearly heard on the recording and with the team all gathered in the dome, there was no one in that part of the prison at the time. Escape Room one of the escape rooms was reported to be an area in which Napier prison staff had had some strange experiences and it was a location which the team felt was worthy of further investigation. Lisa, Karen and Kim set up a table tipping experiment in one of the escape rooms. An old method of attempting spirit communication dating back to the 1800s. Sitting around a small table, they each put their fingertips lightly on the table surface and hoped to feel the table moving by itself. Almost immediately, Ian reported that the fully charged battery in his camera had suddenly gone completely flat. Oh. The battery's just drained from 100% to zero. What really? Yeah. You just drained Ian's battery, you must have some energy. Spirits were encouraged to make taps or bangs, or to otherwise make their presence known to the team. Come on, can I make a bang like this? Is there somebody here that can, wishes to communicate? You can either you. move this table or you can just tap really loudly on it. Maybe it's because you had a whole, whole bunch of people running around, did you? Um, just before we what went. was that? Maybe it's because you had a whole, whole bunch of people running around, did you? Um, Just before we... What was that? I don't want to be disrespectful, but... It looks like you can't do an awful lot. Somebody just make that big sigh. Me, yes, I did, sorry. That's okay. Sounded quite so creepy. When this didn't elicit any noticeable results, the team set up a Ouija board on the table, in the hope that this may be a better method. How about we move it to R and then Although the team tried to encourage the movement of the planchette on the board, no independent movement was experienced. The board was being illuminated with Kim's torch, which was being held up by Holly, who works for Napier Prison. Suddenly, the torch, which had a fresh battery in it, started to flicker off and on. Nancy. Okay. All right, turn it off. And then seemed to react in direct response to Thank requests you. from the team to do oh, so. Oh, hello. Can you turn it back on? So yeah. the Karen, there. myself, yeah. Kim yeah. and Holly Nancy, all found exactly. ourselves in a conversation where a possible spirit was causing the torchlight to flash or glow in response to our questions. Holly suggested that it may be a spirit called Nancy manipulating the torch. As the team continued to communicate through the torch, everyone was startled by a loud and unexpected noise. Are you able to talk to us through this board, Nancy? You just got what the hell was what that? What the hell was that? There was something at your foot. No, it was over there. Was what? It was a massive noise. <laughs> no, I saw something move down by your feet. There's nothing by my feet. Light on it. Well, what? There was something down by your foot. It was a fucking it. massive noise just on my like voice recorder. It sounded like somebody dragging my voice oh, recorder across the ground. Yeah, I saw your voice recorder move as it happened. Well, you're not, you're not it, attached not, to it by the wire. No, you didn't. 
I saw I saw the light on the <laughs> voice. <laughs> The voice recorder my moved. Voice oh, oh, my, the yeah. voice recorder moved across the floor. That was very good. Well done. Is that, well can, done. Flick of the flick of the torch. If that was you moving the voice recorder. How about moving this thing that we've got our fingers on? This is what we're wanting you to move, not the voice recorder. Are you able to talk to us through this board, Nancy? You just got. What the move. hell was what that? What the hell was that? It was something at your foot. The sound had come from Karen's voice recorder suddenly sliding about 12 inches across the floor, propelled by unseen forces. Is this our prankster friend who likes giving people frights? Who's that? It is. Yes. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> Can I just check the torch? Absolutely. Just, yeah. Like turn it on and turn it off and turn it on. So to turn it off, oh, to turn it off you just like that. In order to ensure the torch was operating properly, and wasn't simply suffering an intermittent fault. Kim took the torch back from Holly, checked it over, and found it to be in full working order. Next, to rule out any possibility of human interference, Kim put the torch on a chair. All right, well, I'm gonna put this here. Again, the torch seemed to react by getting brighter and flashing in response to questions. Can you make it go brighter or darker? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going brighter. It's really good. Awesome. What were you in prison for? Did you murder somebody? I take that as a yes. Yes. Mm. Right. <coughs> Robbery. Bit of Robbery that. Robbery and murder. Bit of, this. <laughs> Bit of that. Are we talking to a spirit who's buried on sight? What was that? Oh, it was a big oh, flash. Was You're buried out there, George. Oh, man. Da -da. That was, well, that was quite exciting, but we still haven't seen you smooth. <laughs> no, but I have to say, since having it out, yeah, yeah. something happened. Your voice recorder made Not... was quite exciting. <laughs> Cell 26, Basil's room. Cell 26 is located at the far end of the men's wing. A long, sloping corridor leads down to the cell, and the floor squeaks distinctively on the incline whenever it is stepped on. Cell 26 is known as Basil Cell, named after an inmate who came to the prison in the 1960s. Basil apparently adored cats, and had kept a large number of them as pets prior to being sent to prison. Shortly afterwards, a kitten showed up at the prison. He had the same half ginger, half dark markings on his face as the deceased inmate, and was given the name Basil in his honour. At the time of filming, Basil the cat still lives at the prison, and whilst he's definitely elderly, if the stories are true, he must be now over an incredible 50 years old. Oh, On the night of our investigation, we set up a communication session in Basil cell, number 26, and asked lots of questions. Can you make it go to 7.5? Oh, 15.9? What? Wow, back to 1.5. Hey, Basil, welcome to 4.3, you're trying to figure it out, aren't you? Oh, that was, did you hear that? That was a squeak of the floor down in the east way. Oh, I didn't hear that. Things seemed to be fairly quiet at the time, but upon listening back to the audio, Kim had captured a noise which sounds like a whispered, Hey. Make another big sound. Move something. Bang on something. It's like what you did to get chucked into the cell. Why, why are you in prison? Did you murder someone? Whilst Kim cannot be sure what this is, she is confident that it was not any of the team, as they can be heard talking before and after the sound. Kim reports that there was a creepy feeling in the air, like the team were being watched and followed around, and that this feeling hung around us all evening. Lisa and Kim had stayed the night in Basil Cell on a previous visit to Napier Prison, where they had a truly terrifying experience. Kim reports, Lisa and I stayed the night in Basil's room, 
cell number 26. We got into the bunk beds and started to go to sleep when we heard some footsteps coming down the hallway towards us and stopping just outside our room. The atmosphere started to feel really heavy and an impending sense of doom started to creep in. WT <laughs> was there. <laughs> I asked Lisa if she'd heard these incredibly loud yeah. footsteps. Lisa had heard, but she was ignoring them and trying to go back to sleep. We heard some more loud footsteps come back down the hallway and stop right outside our door. This occurred a few times, and one of the times it sounded like someone was pounding on the cell door. Outside our room. You know, like outside outside. Oh, what the fuck could possibly be making that noise? No idea. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the door to creak open. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not in here by myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Is that someone walking down that path? I don't know. It sounds like trainers, isn't it? through something. Fuck, they have afraid. Sorry. About 25 minutes into our stay in the room, I felt a hand touch me on my leg. Oh, I feel like someone's touching my leg. What? I feel like someone's touching my leg. Oh, really? Oh, God. Fuck was that? What the hell? Seriously, that was something throwing. What the fuck? Wasn't it? What a legitimate fuck? Oh my god! That's definitely something thrown, wasn't it? I can't even do this, I don't think. Yes, you can. No, we're alright. We'll be alright. Don't worry. I don't think anything's gonna hurt us. Just gonna be the noises and you know we're gonna have to get up and actually see what that was. You think so? That gave me such fright. Things are getting closer to this room. Yeah. Like it started off up there and now it's like down here. It just sounds like it's right outside the door. <sighs> I'm trying to think what it could be. I'm actually shaking. Are you? I am so scared right now. We have only been in bed. The sound was so loud and so yeah. sudden that it gave Lisa and I a massive fright. We felt like we weren't welcome in the room and that if we were to oh stay longer, God. something bad would happen. We built up the courage to go and I'm see what had made the big bang. Oh my God. Oh, don't worry. <sighs> I'm too scared something's going to grab me. That's from too many, watch too many horror films. Hello? Oh my god, batteries! Oh my god, really? Oh my god, guy! <gasps> the light's turned off! We guys. found a double A battery that had been thrown with so much force got, that it was guys. dented. <laughs> there is a battery on the floor. Okay, I'm gonna just not even trunk on with my sleeping bag. <laughs> this battery was odd because it was an Ever Ready brand battery and no one present was using that brand. Oh my god, I have got the chills. The team proceeded to the remand and suicide wing of the prison. Everyone entered separate cells, and Kim sat in cell three, known as Wayne's room. 
Wayne was a prisoner who was serving a sentence in 1993 for a crime he didn't commit. He had admitted guilt for someone else's crime in order to ingratiate himself with local gang members. At the age of just 18 or 19, he committed suicide just two weeks before the prison closed forever by hanging himself from the window bars using his bedsheets. Kim started a communication session and decided to try to make contact with Wayne's spirit. Kim reports that it was very quiet and nothing happened, or so she thought at the time. Upon reviewing her audio recording, it seems that Kim did, in fact, receive a response. Come on, I know you're here. Make another big sound. Move something. Bang on something. After Kim said, could you please bang on something? The audio has picked up an apparent reply. The word, no, in a whispery voice. Bang on something. Lisa decided to try barking in one of the cells, just as the gang members used to do there. Just as she finishes her barking, the sound of a cat's meow can be heard on the audio recording. Woof, woof, woof. We cannot rule out that it may have been Basil the cat outside responding to the barking, but as the sound wasn't heard at the time, perhaps the ghost of Basil's own cat was making her presence known. Woof, woof, woof. Approximately two seconds after Ian says, oh yeah, Lisa also captured an EVP recording, which sounds like a male voice apparently saying the word, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which one do I think? Lisa also made a second capture of another male voice that speaks over someone when they talk. After Ali makes an ooh 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 noise, Lisa discovered a male voice saying something like, Who's speaking? Napier Prison is a fascinating location with a dark and macabre history. With the unexpected and sometimes frightening experiences which were had there, the Haunted New Zealand team feel that Napier Prison richly deserves its sinister reputation as New Zealand's oldest and most haunted prison.